Masechet Nazir Daf Yod Gemel. These two Mishnayot we have on this Daf are about um, making a vow to be a Nazir dependent on having a child. And it will bring up all kinds of interesting theoretical questions. So here we go. Had any Nazir Lichshiye Li Ben? Ben Nolad Lo Ben. Had is a Nazir. I'll be a Nazir if I have a son. Uh, so he wants to have a son. And again, just like uh, someone if sick is, is, I'll be a Nazir if I get better. This is a way of. Uh, bringing encouragement. Uh, it's kind of like a prayer. Like uh, today someone would say, I will make a donation if something good happens to me. So uh, a person is invoking uh, divine mercy uh, so that um, he will have a son and then he'll do this great thing and be a Nazir. Um, if in fact he has a son, so then he will have to be a Nazir. I mean, that's as simple. The Gemara is going to ask, isn't that obvious? All right, it's not so obvious because Nolad lo bat tum tum veandroginos eno nazir. If he has a daughter, uh, then, well, obviously that is not a son, uh, so he will not be a nazir. But also, if he has someone who is uh, non gendered or double gendered, uh, where it's not clear, is that called a a male or a female, um, since they are not clearly a male son, uh, therefore that does not fulfill the condition, and that person, the father, is not a nazir. On the other hand, if the person said, if I have a child, I will be a nazir, then it does not matter um, whether it's a boy or a girl or uh, to use the modern term, non-binary, uh, the person is a Nazir because that is a child and it doesn't matter uh, what the gender is. He pila ishto eno Nazir. Now, person says, if I have a child, I'll be a Nazir. And his wife did get pregnant, but she miscarried. Well, in that case, he did not give birth to a live, viable child, and therefore he is not a Nazir. Seems simple enough, that's Tanakama. However, Rabbi Shimon Omer Yomar, Im haya ben kayama, hare ani nazir choba, vim lav, hare ani nazir nedavar. Rabbi Shimon disagrees, because he thinks, even though she miscarried, it's possible that that uh, fetus was a viable child. Maybe the mother miscarried, not because there was anything wrong with the health of the child, maybe uh, she had an injury. Or, or some kind of illness that caused the mother to miscarry. But that child was, in fact, a viable child if it was allowed, if it was able, if there was no injury to the mother and it was able to give birth, uh, able to be born, it would live and be healthy. And so that actually may, may be considered um, a fulfillment of the condition in the vow. And we're not, we're just not sure. The Gemara is going to compare it to a case where people make a bet on how much grain there is in the granary, but then we go to the granary and it was stolen and we can't tell. So here too, because it's a miscarriage, it's hard, we can't tell if this child would have survived or if not. And therefore, a person, he is a Nazir. Now, uh, since we're not sure if he should be a Nazir or not, the person should make a, uh, uh, should make a double condition and say, um, if that child would have been viable, then I'm a Nazir Chova because of my previous vow that I made. If I have a child, I'll be a Nazir. And this is, counts as having a child, and therefore he is a Nazir. Um, and if not, if this fetus was not viable, would not have survived, and is not considered considered a child, then I am declaring now that I'll be voluntarily a Nazir from this, this current vow. And that way he is a Nazir either way. You see, if he, um, if he, if he doesn't do this condition he just, and he just fulfills being a Nazir, he just acts like a Nazir, there will be a problem at the end of bringing Korbanot. You can't bring a Korban Chatat if you're not obligated to bring a Korban Chatat. So he can't just make believe. He has to say this so that either it was a viable child, and that way he is a Nazir because of his previous vow. And if not, he has to take upon himself to be a Nazir now, voluntarily, so that either way, at the end, he can bring his korbanot. Um, that is the opinion of Rabbi Shimon.
Now, according to Tanakama, if she was pregnant and miscarried, and then after the miscarriage got pregnant again and had a had a uh, a good healthy child, well then he is the the father will be Nazir because of that first vow that he made before the first pregnancy. Right, that vow continues. If I have a child, he didn't give a time limit. If I have a child ever. Then I'll be an Azir. It wasn't fulfilled for the first pregnancy. It is fulfilled in the second pregnancy. However, Rabbi Shimon Omer Yomar, Im Harishon ben Kayama, Harishon Chova, Vezo Nedaba, Vim Lav, Harishon Nedaba, Vezo Chova. According to Rabbi Shimon, um, he has to be a Nazir again. He already was a Nazir for the first one, although we weren't sure why, because she miscarried uh, the uh, the first one, and we didn't know if he was a viable child, and in that case, he had to be a Nazir the first one. So that's the first part of his condition. If then that first pregnancy, the child was was viable and would have lived if not for some injury that the mother got and wasn't able to uh, come to full term. In that case, the first one that I did before, that was a Nazir Chova in fulfillment of my original vow. And now I will take upon myself another voluntary uh, Nazirut. And if not, if the previous va um, uh, pregnancy would not have been viable. Well, in that case, that one was voluntary. And so, and so this one now that I'm doing, since the child actually was born in the second one, would be the obligatory nazirut in fulfillment of the original, uh, the original one, right? But either way, he does not sure which one it will be, um, but either way, he will be a nazir and he has to take upon himself just in case it was not obligatory to be voluntary so that he can bring his korbanot at the end. That is the Mishnah. Now, going back to the beginning of the Mishnah, that seemed obvious. Hi, my Limemra. Why do you have to tell me that if I say, if I have a son, I'll be a Nazir, and I have a son, I'm going to be a Nazir? That's obvious. And the answer is Mishum Sefa, but Tum Tum Adroginos, and no Nazir. For the next clause, which is uh, a more ambiguous case, if it's a daughter, well, that's pretty uh, pretty straightforward, but um, uh, uh, about someone of a non unclear gender, then it's not a Nazir. We don't call that a son, even if it's a person who is androgynous, who has both signs. Still, since it's both signs, you don't call that a son. Okay, Peshita, that also is obvious. Oh, so even, that is true, it's obvious, because these are not clearly sons, but I might have thought that when a person says the word Ben, see, the word Ben actually has two definitions. It can mean a male child or it could mean a child right just banim just means children when you refer to uh, um, a, a group of uh, of boys and girls um, you say yeladim and uh, you could say banim as uh, as, uh, as as general so the word ben if you uh, uh, connect it with etymology of ebane to build right if you mean, if you meant I, I want to build my family right when i have a ben which means i want to have a child so i might have thought that the word ben uh, means any child uh, and therefore if it was even if it was a bat or um, a, a, a non-binary child then it would it would be a nazir that's what it comes to teach us the mishnah comes to teach us that that's not the case the word ben uh, we take to mean i guess that's the more widespread definition that's what people usually mean if a person wanted to say any child he would say valad like in the second case of the mishnah if he says ben he means specifically a masculine child ve'im amad li valad next case peshita if a person says if i have a child then i'll be an azir and he has a child it doesn't matter what kind of child it is uh, um, certainly it would be an azir isn't that obvious I might have thought that he's not a Nazir because it has to be a child that will be socially acceptable, right? That chashuv, that bene nashe, that the neighbors, the community around will say, oh, this is this is a proper child that the people will say, mazal tov, mabruk. If you had a boy, for sure, everybody. If you had a girl, also, most people will say, mazal tov, good job. But... If it's someone that um, that that uh, person will be embarrassed about, the people will say, "What is that? Tum tum androginos? Did you hear what he had?" People are not going to um, uh, to to, uh, to to give him the honor. The person will be 
uh, socially ostracized. It's not saying that the person should be uh, uh, ostracized, but descriptively, um, uh, that might, that may, uh, if, the, if that's a community that the people will look down upon uh, such a child. So you might think that the, the father has in mind, if I have a child that is socially acceptable, then I'll be a Nazir. But if not, not. So I might have thought that he's not a Nazir, because if he has a tumtum and roginos, kamash malan, that's why the Mishnah has to come to teach us that the word child means any child. It doesn't matter if it's a child that the neighbors uh, um, um, uh, give him uh, congratulations are on, on, or if the neighbors uh, put a social stigma on, on the child. That doesn't matter. That is a child, and the father means to be a Nazir no matter what. Good. Next case. Uh, so the Tana Kama of the Mishnah who says that if a if the mother miscarries, uh, then it's not. We don't know what she miscarried, and we have a doubt on whether it was a viable child or not. And the law of the Tanakhama is not a Nazir. Well, who is the author of this Mishnah? It is Rabbi Yehuda regarding the case of a heap of wheat. In that case, a people made a bet on how much, uh, how much, uh, how much uh, wheat is there. In this heap, is there a hundred cord or not? And they go, I says, I'll be a Nazir if there's a hundred cord. And they go and check, and turns out it was stolen or it was lost. There's no way to check anymore. There was a machlok at the Biuda and the Bishimon. The Biuda says, in the case of uncertainty, we are lenient. You're not a Nazir. The Bishimon, that was back on Dafhet, uh, said that in the case of uh, uh, a doubt, we have to be stringent, and the person is a Nazir. So in this case, we don't, similarly, we don't know what that fe- what the status of that fetus would be if had it come uh, to full term and been born, and therefore, since it's uh, doubtful, the Buddha says, lenient, we assume it was not a viable child, not a Nazir. All right, Rabbi Shimon is in fact the other opinion there, and he's stringent here too. Rabbi Shimon Omer, Yomar, Im haya ben kayama hareni nazir choba, vim lav hareni nazir nedaba. That's the quote from the Mishnah. He makes a condition. If it would, would, was a viable child, then I have to be a nazir and I'll fulfill my nazirut now. If it was not a viable child, so then I don't have, I don't have to be a nazir because of the vow, but since I'm not sure, I'll take upon myself a, a, um, I'm not sure which one it is. I'll take upon myself a voluntary nazirut now. That way he's a nazir either way. All right, that's to be Shimon. Ba'ami nerbi abba meravuna. Hareni nazir lichshiyeli ben, vipila ishto, vifrish korban, vihazra vialda mahu. He has a question. Now, since the question is right after to be Shimon, and kind of looks like he's asking about the Bishimon. In fact, we're going to say he's asking about for the Bihuda. The question is as follows. Person says, I'll be a Nazir if I have a son. And then his wife miscarries. But at some time there, he designated a sacrifice to offer upon his completion of Nazirut. Um, uh, now, at, at, at some time after that, she uh, got pregnant again and gave birth. What is the status of that sacrifice? Uh, so for sure, at the second point, he's going to have to be a Nazir because now he had a child, but he offered, he designated it um, during the first pregnancy, but that pregnancy ended up being a miscarriage. So does he have to redesignate it or not? That's his question. Let's analyze it both ways. Okay, if this question is to is asked uh, within the uh, the view of Rabbi Shimon, then there's not a question. According to Rabbi Shimon, if you have it, have a doubt whether you're a Nazir or not, you have to be stringent, and he has to bring it right, and he has to make this uh, this double condition. So therefore, if his wife uh, miscarried. And he designated a sacrifice to, because he's going to be a Nazir. Certainly, that will, it will be a consecration because he has to be a Nazir. One way or another, in fulfillment of the vow or as a, as a voluntary one. So that's for, for sure that animal will have been consecrated. Um, and so and then his wife gets pregnant again and gives birth. Actually, he's going to have to be a Nazir again and bring more animals. So there's no need to ask. 
the question for the Bishimon. Ve'ela alibad de Bihuda de Amas Efek Nizudrakel. My Kadosh or Lo Kadosh. Rather, we're asking the question according to the Bihuda. Um, even according to the Biuda, there is some uh, uncertainty in the first case uh, whether you would have to bring it. He says, since it's uncertainty, you don't have to be a Nazir. But because there was some uncertainty, let's say he did designate a, a an animal. Some say that he it must have been must be that he designated the animal while his wife was pregnant. Because if it was after she already miscarried, then he doesn't have to be, be, he be a nazir. What would be the point of of, the, of consecrating something when he has, doesn't have to be a nazir? Seems like it wouldn't be consecrated. Uh, but the order here is he pila and then he frish korbanah. Maybe he had already. Okay, whatever the order is, uh, at some point he um, he designated an animal to be a nazir, and there is some uncertainty there, and so maybe the consecration works. And uh, so the animal is consecrated. And then after the second, second successful pregnancy, when she actually gives birth to a child, he could just take that same animal and does not need to consecrate it again when he becomes a Nazir after the second pregnancy in fulfillment of the first vow. That's the question. Quick, uh, uh, quick clarification. Clarification. My nafkamina. Uh, what what would be the difference if it was consecrated or not? Either way, after the second a child, after the second pregnancy, and the child is born, he is going to be a nazir for sure, and he will bring that animal. So, because it's and if 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 it wasn't consecrated before, so he'll consecrate it again. I mean, you can say an animal is consecrated a hundred times. There's no no harm in doing that. So consecrate it and bring it. So what would be the practical difference be- between the two sides of the question. Um, he, don't, he, doesn't, he didn't sacrifice the first com- time because he was never a Nazir the first time. The answer is, What is its holiness status in the meantime <clears throat> in terms of shearing it and working it? If it was consecrated from the time of the first pregnancy, then he's not allowed to shear it or use it for a labor because it's a holy animal. You're not allowed to use a holy animal or have any or have, have benefit from it. So if it was consecrated, it would be prohibited that whole time. On the other hand, if that consecration did not take effect because she uh, that was a miscarriage and he was not a nazir and the consecration didn't take effect then it would be permitted to shear the animal and use it from the time of the uh, first consecration until the second consecration tekel we leave this open-ended uh, the question is left standing notice here the word tekel is the usual word that we have in other masechtot Similar language. We're going to see the word tiba'e in a few in a few minutes, which is the equivalent of teko that's found in Masechet Nedarim. And so we see here in Nedarim it uses both teko and uh, tiba'e, uh, the more curious one. Uh, we could check the manuscript to see if te- if teko here uh, replaces. Um, uh, tiba'e, but uh, uh, Nazir also uses some of the um, Nedarim type of language. Okay, Be'amine ben rechume me abaye. All right, so now some more questions on uh, this uh, similar a similar topic. Um Hareni Nazir Lichsheye Li Ben. Beshama Khavero Vamar Vealai Mahu Adibure Mashma O Agufe Mashma. A person A says, I'll be a Nazir if I have a son. His friend B oh, hears that and says, Vealai, upon me also. So here's the problem of the pronouns. How do we um, how do we cipher the pro- how do we decipher the pronouns when he says ve'alai mahu? Is it talking? Is it saying on A's words? Right, A said that A will be a nazir if A has a son. And when B says upon me also, then does that mean that when A has a son, then B is also a nazir? Is that what he meant to say? Right? In other words, when you have a son, I'll be a Nazir too. Or Agufe Mashma, or is B talking about himself? That just like when A has a child, A will be a Nazir, B says Ve'alai means when B has a child, B also will be a Nazir. In other words, they're both two single uh, dads or two da- guys that want to have uh, 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 children, more children, another son. 
And so A says, I'll be a Nazir. B says, I want to have a son too. Good idea. I'll also be a Nazir if I have a son. All right, it's not clear. Since you just said ditto, it's not clear if you transfer, how you transfer the pronoun when you just say ditto. That's question number one. Before answering it, we um, ask a follow-up question. And if you say, in that case, he means about himself, right? So he's taking it upon himself. How about the following? Um, if A said the same thing, I'll be a Nazir if I have a son. And the second one, instead of saying, Ve'alai sounds like whatever you said is upon me, like whatever you do, I will do. But Va'ani means me too. Well, how about that? Mahu is va'ani referring to himself? Uh, so the anafshe is the same as saying agufe. So when person say, A says, nazir, I'll be a nazir if I have a son. And then B says, va'ani uh, means I also will be a nazir if I have a son. Right? B is saying, if B has a son, B will be a nazir. So va'ani was therefore the, the same as ve'alai. Or maybe not. Maybe Va'ani is saying as follows. I love you as much as you love yourself. And you love yourself uh, as so much that you want to have a son. And you're willing to be a Nazir if you have a son. He says, you know what? If you have a son, I will be so happy for you. As happy as you are for yourself. And therefore, just as you will take upon yourself to be a Nazir, I want to also, I also will be a Nazir um, if you have a son, right? Now we have double power, right? And maybe from Shamayim, you'll get extra help uh, to have a son. And therefore, um, even if you say that Ve'alai means that I'm gonna, I'm, I myself want to have a son, but maybe Va'ani is more of a ditto to you, right? I, I'll, I want the same for you and I'll take upon myself as it for you. Okay, that's the second question. Uh, without answering that, we follow up with a third. Imtim se lomar kol be'anpe kesifa le milita. If you say anything that you say in front of someone else, you'd be embarrassed to pray for yourself, right? Because it looks like competition. If A says, I'll be a Nazir if I have a son. And this friend hears it and says, oh yeah, good idea. I'll be a Nazir if I have a son. It looks like he's competing and he doesn't care about A. Oh, A, I don't really care about you have a son. You know what? I want to have a son too. Um, uh, uh, so then it wouldn't be it wouldn't be nice and the person B would be embarrassed to make a Nazir in front of him. Maybe he'll wait till he goes home and say, you know what? A made a vow. I'll make a vow like that too. But he's not going to say it in front of him uh, unless if he's saying it in front of him, he means to be a Nazir also for A's sake if A has a son. So if you say that in all these cases, he is referring to A's, if A has a son, then B will be a Nazir also. Then here's the next question, Amar. Had any Nazir ikshet le peloni ben? Veshama chavero v'amar va'ani mahu. If A says, um, A says, if C, Mr. C has a son, I'll be a Nazir. Right? Mr. C, you know, he's been trying to have a, a child for a long time. I really feel for him. I'll be a Nazir if he has. He, C is not around. And then B is uh, together with A. And B says, me too. Ah, Do we say in that case, since it's not in front of him, so he wouldn't be embarrassed to talk about himself and say, A, since A made a vow that A will be a Nazir, if C has a son, B hears that and says, you know what, I'd like to have a son also, and I'll be a Nazir, B will be a Nazir if B has a son. And he's not going to be embarrassed to do that because C is not around anyway, so it doesn't look like he's competing or doesn't care about C's feelings. Or do we say that uh, B means to say, uh, I love C as much as you do. And just like you would be so, so happy and willing to put yourself out and be a Nazir if C has a child, uh, Va'ani, me too. I also want him to have a child and I'll be a Nazir. 
and we leave these questions unresolved as questions. Continue to uh, question and discuss it. These are like headings for exercises that students would then go take upon themselves and present answers. Notice here that we use the word tiba'e, the, um, the vocabulary that we found in Nedarim, which does suggest that Nazir and also Nedarim were, uh, come from uh, the same yeshivot, the same editorial circles. All right, and now next Mishnah is uh, going to be about uh, 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 periods of Nizirut that interrupt each other. You start one, then you go to the other one, and then you and finish it, and then you resume the original Nizirut. How does this work? Um, at the uh, point of the taking the vow, he promises two nazirut. One, he says, I'm a nazir. Well, that one's going to start right away, and we'll assume it's a standard amount of 30 days. He also says, when I have a son, I will be a nazir. Now, he doesn't know when that's going to be. Let's assume his wife is pregnant or not or, not, or whatever. Um, so what does he do? He starts, assume his wife is pregnant. So because we're going to assume only 30 days. So uh, he starts his own counting. Right. And he starts, let's say he finishes uh, 20 days. Um, and then on day 20, his wife has a child. Uh, they, he has a child. There you go. Now, mashlim et shelo, v'achar kach et shel beno. In that case, he should complete his own, finish till 30 days, bring a shave and bring his korbanot, and then he'll start the next one, That because he did have a son, so then he'll start the one, the, the second vow for his son. Okay, that's a simple case where you have one and then you have the other. However, if he switches the order, he says, Hareni nazir kishi ben, ve nazir. I want to be a nazir when I have a son. And I'm taking upon myself a standard nazirut with no conditions attached. Oh, so because the che changed the order, so now they have to be fulfilled, they should be fulfilled in the same order that he took them. The problem is, if he has no, he doesn't know exactly when he's going to have a son. So, he's not going to start the first vow because he didn't have a son yet. Um, instead, he's going to start the regular vow uh, of standard 30 days. So, he starts that, doing that. And then, and then on day 20, he has a son. He has to start right away. The first vow about the son, because he took that first, so it takes precedence. What he does is he pauses. He doesn't stop it. He doesn't cancel it. He pauses the second standard vow on day 20, right? Puts a marker. I did 20 days. Starts the first vow for having a son. Does 30 days completes that one, so now we're at day 50, and then, what does he have, 10 more days? He does 10 more days. At the end of ten of that 10 days of that entire 60-day 60 per, 60 period, then he'll shave and bring both sets of korbanot. You see, he can't shave uh, he can't shave and bring korbanot after the fi- on the fiftieth day um, because he's still in the middle of the nizirut of the first one, uh, so he, he can't shave then. Furthermore, if he starts then and has only ten more days, he won't have enough hair to do a f- uh, to shave. You, to shave, you need at least thirty days of growth; otherwise, it's not called a growth. Um, and so he'll still continue without shaving and then bring the two sets of korbanot after the 60 days, but it uh, uh, ends up being 20, 30, and 10. Those are just examples. It could be anywhere in between. Okay, good. That is the Mishnah. And based on this Mishnah, we're going to have now a series of theoretical challenges. Ba'e Rava. Amad hareni nazir lachad asrim yom. A person, Rava is going to ask a series of questions. This is actually the second question. We're skipping the first. We're going to come back and see what the previous question was. Um, Here, a person takes two vows of Nazirut, uh, back to back. He says, I am a Nazir in 20 days. In other words, in 20 days from now, I want to start being a standard Nazir of 30 days. Also, secondly, I want to be a Nazir starting now 
a Nazir for 100 days. So what you see is that this is a problem because if he starts now 100 days, then in 20 days, there's going to be another one. You can't be a Nazir uh, 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 two Nazirs at the same time. Uh, um, so one is going to have to give. So how are we going to arrange this? I mean, ideally, we want to do the first one first and the second one second, but it's not always possible. So here's the two sides. Do we say, since the 100 day long Nizirut um, cannot fit into the 20 days, so we'd prefer not to bifurcate a Nizirut, a Nizirut period and do 20 days now and 80 days later. And therefore, since the 100 days will not fit in the 20 days now, we're going to delay it. <clears throat> and for 20 days, he can drink wine, do whatever he wants. On day 20, he'll start the um, he'll start the first vow um, of 20 days, and then after that, he'll do uh, on day 50. Then he'll do the hundred days, and that actually goes in order of the what of what he said. Now he, the problem is he said Shav. I'm going to start the hundred days from now, so we can't do that. Sorry, you know, ideally you'd want to do Shav, but since it's impossible to fit it all in starting right now, so it has to be delayed. That is the first option. Or maybe you'll say, well, he said Marshav, so start now, and it's okay to bifurcate. Um, and so you'll do 20 now, we'll put that on pause, then until day 5th from 20 to 30, from 20 to 50, that's another 30 days, and he can then shave and bring his korbanot, and even after that, there's still more than 30 days left. You have 80 days left. And that's plenty of time to grow more hair and be able to shave again at the end of the full 100 days. Therefore, we don't mind bifurcating. It's all right. And therefore, it does, uh, the uh, vow for 100 days does take effect first and is paused and we will bifurcate it. That is question number one. Now we actually question number two. Okay, now we uh, now we interrupt. Why did you start with that question? Why don't you start with uh, a question of a shorter term nizirut? Let's say thirty days and thirty days, and which would be similar to this one, in which he says, "I'm going to be a nazir for thirty days, starting twenty days from now, and I'm also going to be a nazir for thirty days starting now." See that in that case. Um, there's more of a reason to push it off uh, because uh, 20 days doesn't fit now. And if I do the 20 days now, let's say I'm a fine to bifurcate and I do the 20 days now and then uh, uh, and then pause it for the other 30 day period and then do 10 days at the end, that will be a problem because only 10, 10 days at the end is not enough time to regrow a 30 day growth of hair. And then how, how, how is he going to be able to shave and bring his korbanot at the end. And so you should start with that question because with that question is more likely that you'd say, push it off till the end. And then ask the 100 days um, uh, and, uh, and then uh, where you can put it start now. Um, so the, you, should ask, uh, you should ask a more fundamental question first. Why don't we ask that first? Um, and the answer is You're right, this, this question that Abbas just said, that was a result of yet another question. And in fact, that one was uh, asked first. And so we said as follows. First of all, I asked about the case of shorter Nizirut. And he said, well, what should we do? Should we do it this way or should we do it that way? Even for there, there is a possibility to start the first one right away. Um, and this would be similar to the case in the Mishnah. See, in the case of the Mishnah, we actually do precisely that um, because he says, I'm going to be a Nazir, standard 30, and also when I have a child, um, or uh, let's talk about the second case here. I'm going, to, I'm going to be a Nazir when I have a child, and I'm going to be a Nazir. So we start the regular Nazirut first. Um, and in fact, yeah, he'll, he'll start the regular Nazirut, he'll pause, be a Nazir for 30 days and then do the last 10 days at the end. So we do in fact uh, um, allow that in the Mishnah. And the Mishnah, we have to allow it because we don't know 
if and when he's going to have a child, right? We have no idea if, if his wife is going to give birth. Maybe she, maybe she won't. Maybe it'll, it'll be um, a, a miscarriage. Maybe who knows what will happen? And so since we cannot predict when she's going to give birth, maybe it'll be after a full 30 days um, of his first Nizirut. So we're not going to delay his Nizirut on something that we cannot predict if and when it will be. So in the Mishnah, he has to start his standard Nizirut first, and then if it gets interrupted, okay, it gets interrupted, and he said this one first, so he has to start the one for the for the son, and then he'll finish it off, and because he doesn't have enough days at the end, so we'll have to tell him, okay, don't, uh, don't shave after the 50 days, wait until after the 60 days, shave then, and bring, bring, bring both Korbanot. So in the Mishnah, we do start right away, but in the case where he it is predictable and he knows that he's going to have to start the uh, second um, uh, uh, fra- phase, the uh, nezirut moetet, right? This is um, the second, right? This is the the, the first question. <clears throat> um, so then, uh, then we're not sure would it be the same law as the Mishnah, or we tell him since you don't have enough time. To sh- to grow after at the last uh, after the thirty day middle one since you don't have enough time to grow a full hair therefore don't even start it Let's do it later um, so uh, do we say that now if we answer that if in that case we say because only ten days at the end so don't leave just ten days therefore do do uh, drink for twenty days. And uh, do the do the nizirut full nizirut of thirty days, and then do a full another full nizirut of thirty days. If you say that, then that's now we're bringing in the question that we started with. If he knows he has a hundred days <clears throat> for the one that's supposed to start now, well, in that case, will you also push it at the end so it can all be together because we don't want to bifurcate? Or do we want to start now? Because he said, I'm starting now. And even though if we'll bifurcate, and in that case, it's easier to say um, that he should start now because he has 80 days left at the end, plenty of time to grow lots of hair. Okay, now that's the second. Now we build on that a third question. And if you say, he takes a, takes effect right away. He starts, he does 20 days and then pauses, bifurcates and does the 80 days later. What if the person says, I am a Nazir, I'm going to be a Nazir in 20 days, standard Nazirut of 30 days, so from 20 to 50 I'm going to be a Nazir, and also he takes upon himself to be a permanent Nazir. Uh, starting now. So now what should we do? Um, so here, what should we say that Michaela, he should start being a permanent Nazir now, because he said he's going to be a Nazir now. The problem with that is that he's a permanent Nazir until for the rest of his life. And that means he'll never be able to uh, fulfill his uh, standard Nazirut, because right? he's never going to have a break. Um, or do we say, no, uh, push it off, even though you said now, but you also have this other obligation, and if you start now, you won't be able to do that one. So you know what? Drink for 20 days. Then start the standard Nizirut for 30 days, and then on day 50, you can start your Nizir Olam. Uh, that's the third question. And uh, build on that. Im tim selomar hacha, kevan de le haila. We may say, in the case of Nazir Olam, you can always request uh, to annul a Nazir Olam. You go to Hacham, says, I'm going to be in Nazir Olam. I didn't recognize the consequences of it. Can you undo it? And he can, he can stop it. Since it's possible to annul that, so you could say, you know what? Your Nazir Olam, which you said, Ma'ashav, start now. And uh, eventually, at some point, you can ask a Chacham to uh, end it, and then you'll do the other Nizirut that you promised. Maybe on day 19, even, you can, um, you can go and undo it. And so it is possible that you'll fulfill both, and therefore it should start uh, immediately, if you take that, uh, that position. What about the more complex question, Amar? On this level, number one, we're changing Nazir Olam to Nazir Shimshon. Also, we're switching the order of the uh, of the phrases. Nazir Shimshon is different from Nazir Olam because you cannot annul Nazir Shimshon. 
since Shimshon became a Nazir, not by saying a vow, he was just born that way. And since you, this is not by becoming taking a vow, you also can't undo a Nazir Shimshon if a person does take with a vow, even though he took it with a vow, just like Shimshon couldn't annul it, a Nazir Shimshon cannot annul it. So then you don't have this out that you can go to a Chacham. So first he, first he says, I'm going to be a Nazir Shimshon eh, starting in 20 days. And right now I'm bound to be a Stam Nazir. So do we say, Hacha uh, la evshad ishtule mi la olo? Since in this case you cannot undo the Nazirut, should we start the Stam Nazirut? now or not. See, if you start it now, I'm going to serve 20 days, 20 out of 30 days of it. Then I'm going to be a Nazir Shimshon. And I'm going to be a Nazir Shimshon forever the rest of my life. I'll never be able to complete the last 10 days of my Nazirut. So should I start it or not start that Nazirut at all and just drink for 20 days and then be Nazir Shimshon? Okay, that's the fourth question. We add to that, the next question is not directly related uh, to the logic of the previous ones. Uh, it's a bit of a tangent. Amar ki Moshe be'adar mai. If someone says, I want to be like Moshe on the seventh of Adar. Moshe died on the seventh of Adar, according to the Midrashic calculation. He was also born that day. But he's referring to Moshe's death. Now, this is not a death wish, but rather, since Moshe died on that day, he no, no longer drank any wine. So, do we assume that a person has in mind to be a Nazir? If he says such a formula, is this a normal, uh, normal way of speaking? Um, or not? Is this not in the per, uh, uh, a statement of being a, uh, a Nazir? Maybe he wants to disappear and so no one can find him, uh, like Moshe on the seventh of Adar. Right? So what is this? Is this a Nazir formula or not? Now, what is this doing here? Uh, well, uh, there may be some connection to Shimshon, uh, just like uh, Shimshon is a Nazir forever, and it's not because he took a vow, he was just born that way. So too, Moshe, although not a Nazir, um, he is not going to drink wine, not because of a vow he took, but rather because he, uh, he passed away. Um, that's uh, one uh, similarity. Perhaps another similarity is that Shimshon actually was allowed to be Tamei Lamet, and Moshe, um, uh, once he dies, he is, is Tamei Lamet. Um, okay, it's uh, not really clear what the connection is here, but anyway, that was the, that's the last question. All right, we leave most of them up in the air, except for the first we answer. Peshot minayu kadmaita. Hareni nazir laachar esrim yom. Ume achshav mea yom. Mone asrim. Veachar kach mone sheloshim. Veachar kach mone shemonim. Kedel lashlim nazirut rishona. Oh, going all the way back to the first question that we started, that Rava started with. That we have an answer to because there is a Braita, a Tosefta, uh, that is, answers it explicitly. If a person vows, I'm going to be a Nazir in 20 days, a regular 30-day Nazir. And starting now, I want to be a Nazir for 100 days. He should start now, count 20, put it on pause, then count 30. And then when he's done with that, uh, he could complete that one, shave, bring korbanot, and then count the other 80. And that way, uh, the next 80 will fulfill his first term of nizirut. And so, in fact, there we go. We have a, an answer to the first one. And uh, based on that, we can uh, work out the logic and uh, argue and discuss all the rest of the challenges. Baruch Adonai Le'olam. Amen v'amen.